This tutorial is all about advanced custom fields. I'm going to show you how to create custom post types, how to apply advanced custom fields to, a, to that custom post type in the WordPress editor, and how to then create the template to output those custom fields into a custom built page on the front end. And the page we're building looks like this. It's for a movie review site, and you can create whatever page you want. And I give you all the CSS, all of the code, everything. You just copy and paste it right from the blog. You can duplicate this exact page if you want, or use that as a starting point and then customize it further to your needs. Either way, you're gonna learn advanced custom fields in depth in this tutorial, and it's a long tutorial. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here and you like WordPress tips and tricks and getting better at it and serving your clients better, then start now by clicking subscribe. Then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And make sure you sign up for the private WP Learning Lab Facebook group where we can hang out, ask questions, help each other get better at WordPress. There's a link in the description down below, so make sure you check that out. And with that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture. This is the template we're gonna create in this tutorial using custom post types UI plugin and the advanced custom fields plugin with some custom PHP and CSS. This is an advanced tutorial, not for beginners, although you can copy and paste the code I give you and probably get this exact end result as a beginner. So you can go ahead and do that if you like, uh, or you can even tweak the code a little bit doing what I tell you and hopefully get the result that you actually want and not just copy this one. But what we have here is a custom post and it's a movie listing post. This is for an example site of movies and all the information you see entered on this page is entered into a WordPress editor with these specific fields. You notice these fields are not what you'd see on the normal editor. The release date, genre, country, movie storyline, trailers, cast members, this is not what you see on a regular WordPress editor. We are creating a custom editor in a sense. And if you look at the custom editor that was created for that demo, which we're gonna recreate in this tutorial, we have a movie storyline meta box instead of just the regular editor box. We have trailers where we can add trailer links. We click on the add row button to add more trailers. Let's click on that, add another trailer. Click on that again, add another trailer. There's a cast members box with a name and or a real name and a character name in the movie with an image. Click on add row to add more cast members if you want to. On the right hand side here, we have the image that we see at the top of the post. The duration, genre, rating, all this information that we collect from somewhere. I don't know where you want to get it from, but you get the information from somewhere and you can input it into the custom post type. And the featured image is the main image we see at the very top. This is just one example of how to use the advanced custom fields and custom post types. You can create literally anything you want doing this. Like I said, this is just an example to show you how all the technology works. And all the code that we're gonna to get to in a minute as well is on this post on the website that I've linked to in the description down below. And you can li literally copy and paste all the code. This is the page itself. And then this down here is the CSS itself to create this exact page if you wanna do that. We're gonna to get to that in a minute. First, we gotta install some plugins. First plugin we will have to install is CPT UI. I already have this plugin installed on the site, so I'm not gonna reinstall it. I have a tutorial dedicated to that plugin, linked to in the card above. So if you want that plugin in detail, check out that tutorial. If you don't want it in detail, you just want to install it, just go to plugins and then add new and then look for custom post types UI. And this is when you install it, this is the one you'll have. And then once it's installed, we go to add edit post types. And really simply, we're going to add a slug for, I'm just going to call it movie. And the plural name, I'm gonna call it movies, and the singular name, I'm gonna call it movie. And the slug that we enter here is what appears in the URL. In this example, we have music in the URL. With a movies post type, this is gonna say movies in the URL. And the plural label and singular label is what appears in the back end. So this music post type right here, once we click on add post type, we're gonna have a movies post type appear right below it. There are a lot of additional settings down below that you don't have to set. They're not required for this to work. I go through these settings in the CPT UI tutorial I referred to a few minutes ago. 
So if you want to use these settings, check that out. It's not required for this tutorial. And this is an advanced custom fields tutorial, not a custom post type configuration tutorial. And all you really need are these basics up here. Click on add post type. And now we have a movies post type on the left hand side. And if we go to add new, we're going to see there's not much going on. A moment ago, we saw all the fields in the other post type where we had the storyline, cast members, trailers, all these things we could add. Here, all we have is the title, the editor box, and the featured image. And that's it. If you go to screen options, there's nothing hidden aside from slug, which is add anyway once you add a title. So there's nothing here. We're going to use the advanced custom fields plugin to actually add the fields to this page. To do that, we have to install that plugin. If we go to plugins and then add new, and then search for advanced custom fields, this plugin in the top left is the one we want. Over a million active installs, five out of five stars, updated two weeks ago. A lot of good stuff going on with this plugin. I already have it installed and activated. You would see an install now button, click on install now, that'll turn into an activate button, activate it. And before you do that, you want to back up your site, back up your files, back up your database, because when you install new plugins, even though WordPress has come a long way and this has been tested in the latest version of WordPress, stuff can still go sideways. So always make sure you do backups before you install new plugins. Now, once that one's installed, what I have is an additional plugin. I'm going to show you what it is right now. It is called the repeater field. And that is a premium add-on to version four of advanced custom fields, the repeater field right here. It's a premium add-on, like I said, and it is the one that adds the capability to add more than one. For the trailers, we saw the add more button that allows you to add more trailers. And for the cast, we had the add more button so we could add more cast. That is what the repeater field is. If we go to the advanced custom fields website and then click on add-ons, this is the repeater field right here. For version four, which is the one that this demo is based on, it's a premium add-on that you buy separately. In version five, also known as ACF Pro, it comes built right into the add-on. If we go to Pro and then scroll down, we can check out their pricing. It's 25 Australian dollars for one site, a one-time payment. Pretty cheap for the power of it. 100 bucks for developer license, also pretty cheap one-time payment. And as of the recording of this tutorial, they're transitioning to five right now. So if we go to the home page here, and we see on the home page at the very top, there's early access to version five, the free version. And you have to do special tweaks to your site to actually have this update appear. If we go to our plugins listing here, we see I have version 4.4. Even though version five is available, it doesn't actually show up until you do the custom stuff. So I'm gonna do a separate tutorial on how to update to version five. I'm gonna do this tutorial on version four, then we're going to update to version five. I'm going to show you what it takes to update all your content to version five as well, which is pretty much automatic, but I'm just going to show you anyway, just so you don't miss any steps. And because I know a lot of you guys are using version four, so we want to make sure that we have all our bases covered. All that to say, I have the repeater field installed. This is not in the free version. So the trailer and the cast members that use the repeater field, you're going to have to do something a little different or just get the pro version either one. Now that we have advanced custom fields installed, we have a new menu item called custom fields. Click on that to go to your custom fields. You'll likely have none there right now. I've got a bunch, which are the movie info, the storyline, the trailer, and the cast, which I used in that demo. I'm going to recreate all these right now so you can see the process of how to create them. The first thing we have to do is click on add new, and I'm going to call the field movie plot going to add the number two just to make sure I can differentiate them from the demo one that I created. Now that we have a title, you can add the title whatever you want. Again, this works for any kind of post type that you want to create. Travel blogs, recipe blogs, whatever you want. Just name these fields appropriate to what they actually are going to be representing on the editor so it makes sense to you. And if you come back six months later, you can read the names of the fields and know what they actually are. So movie plot two is what it's going to be called. If you click on add field to add a field. The field label, this is what it's going to be called on the actual edit page. And in fact, I'm going to just open a new edit page and refresh this as we go so we can see what we're adding to the page. The current edit page looks exactly like the one that you saw earlier. 
So after we've saved this movie plot entry, we're going to take a look at that page and see how it looks. So the field label, I'm just going to call it movie plot. Field name, no dashes, it pre-fills actually once you click in here, it pre-fills it based on what you have here. You can change this if you want. Spaces are not allowed. Underscores and dashes are allowed, as you can see here. The field type, this is going to be a text field, actually a text area field. You can make it a WYSIWYG editor, which makes it look like one of these guys where you can add links and just the, the, the WYSIWYG editor with the visual tab. I'm just going to keep it a text area field for my purposes because I just want text in there. For the instructions, please enter a short plot line of the movie. No spoilers. Here you'd write in the instructions for what it is. Let's say you're creating this custom post type, but you have other people writing the content. Explain what goes into that field using this area here. Is it a required field? In my case, yes. Movie listing without the plot isn't a lot of fun. So we want that to be on there. Decide whether you need it to be required for yourself or not. The default value, you're not going to have anything. Placeholder text, nothing. Character limit, I'm going to put it at 10,000. Number of rows, this is how many rows they see. If they go beyond the eight rows, they have to scroll down to see more. They can add more content to just eight rows, but they have to scroll down to see it. The formatting, whenever you add a carriage return, if you choose this option, it uses a hard break. You can also convert it to HTML tags, like a paragraph. I'm just going to keep mine on hard break. There's no conditional logic for this field. And we can actually go ahead and close the field right now. It's not saved yet, mind you. We just closed it. And we can add more fields if we want to, but for movie plot, we're just adding this one right now. It's not saved until we click publish. But first, we want to set the location, which is what actually adds it to the movie post type. And we do that using rules. If we read what the statement says, show this field group if post type, you can choose all kinds of different post types. If post type is equal to, in my case, movie, and that's it. You can add more rules if you want, but for this to appear in the movie post type in this example, that's the only rule you have to have. If the post type is the movie post type, it will add this field. As you saw, there's a lot of different options. You can even add it to a regular post. So you wanted to add custom fields just to a regular post? Just select post. If post type is equal to, you can add it to individual posts, or you can add it to all posts. Anyway, this one's got a custom post type. That was a bit of a, dig bit of a digression there. The movie post type, there we go. More options. The ordering, this is what order it appears on the page. This isn't important for the first one you add, and it's probably not important until you've added all the post types you want, then you're going to find how they're ordered on the page. The position, before, after content, I just keep them all where it is right now, and then I tweak it later. Things you want to hide on the screen, these are all things that come built into WordPress in the editors. You can either show or hide them, depending on what your selections are here. The box style is fairly important just in regards to design on the back end. Nobody on the front end, no visitors will ever see the style, but the editors, the creators of the content will. There's two options, seamless and standard. I'm going to show them both since we've set the options now. I'm going to click on publish. Now I'm going to head out to the movie editor that we have here. Just click on refresh. And if we scroll down a little bit, we have a movie plot meta box. Now this is the seamless look for a meta box. If we change this to the standard WP meta box and click on update and then refresh this page, the editor page, and then scroll down again. This is what the standard WP box looks like. I prefer the WP box because you give this this arrow where you can open and close the box. Which one you choose is up to you. Again, nobody uh, on the visiting end of your site will actually ever see it. It's just inside the editor. And right now we have a regular content builder that we see on regular WordPress posts as well that I want to get rid of. I don't want to have this on this custom post type. I just want to have the movie plot and our custom ones that we're building. So I'm going to go to the CPT UI and then click on add edit post types. 
and then click on edit post types and then choose movies which is the post type that we're working on then I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom and again I cover this more in depth in the CPT UI tutorial that I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial it's also linked to in the description down below in this box right here we can add and remove things on that editor so I want to take off the editor option and you can add custom fields which we're doing with advanced custom fields comments revisions author you can add all these things I'm going to add uh, author and revisions and excerpt in fact so I'm going to remove the editor and add those three boxes and then click on save post type now if I head back to add new under movies we don't have the movie plot that we created the editor is gone we have excerpt and author under screen options we have the slug as well and then revisions would appear once it's published there are no revisions until you actually publish it and we have the featured image over here now we're going to continue adding more of these custom fields so we can build out our sample page next I'm going to add the trailer field which I'm going to put right down below the movie plot field so I'm going to head into add new to create a new advanced custom field and I'm going to call this trailers then I'm going to click on add field I'm going to call this trailers 2 just so I don't get confused with the existing ones then I'm going to call this movie trailers field name as that that's fine and the field type is going to be repeater field at the very bottom here which is again that premium add-on that I told you about earlier the instructions are going to be add links to trailers and it's going to be required and the repeater field adds this box down here that allows you to add repeatable content called a subfield so I'm going to click on add subfield I'm going to call this trailer link I'm going to capitalize it trailer link will be the field name the field type I'm going to keep it as text it's going to be required I'm not going to add instructions because I added the instructions a moment ago I'm not going to add any default values or text I am going to preprint HTTP colon forward slash forward slash this is going to appear before the input so they can just add the www after that and everything else I'm going to keep as it is it's not a conditional field so that's all done minimum number of rows is zero you don't need to have trailers and I'm going to limit it to 10 trailers I think 10 is probably enough trailers the layout is going to be as a row the button label this is when they click on the button to add more trailers so I'm going to call this add a trailer so that's going to be the button text that they click on to add more trailers and again this isn't conditional either and that is all we have to set for the trailer field and the rule we set again our post type is equal to movies or movie the order number I'm gonna put it at 1 and now it should be appearing after the movie plot you don't have to set any of these orders at all or you can set them when you're done like I was saying earlier you'll figure it out these are tweaks you can do afterwards meta box you want to set to standard WP meta box so it's wrapped in that nice box that we can um, minify click on publish to publish this field go back out to our movie editor refresh it and now we have our trailers box with the add a trailer button click on add a trailer and we can add the URL add a trailer again add another one and another one another one and we should be limited to 10 reach maximum rows 10 rows so we can add 10 trailers if we want to well, if you want to get rid of them just click on the little minus icon and they are removed all right so now we have two fields trailers movie plot now we're going to add the cast member field down below and then we have the central column of the content finished which is the storyline or plot the trailer then the cast after that we're going to do this left hand column of the image and the movie info 
So next we're in the cast, which is another repeater field. I'm going to click on add new field here. I'm going to call this cast info. Click on add field. Field label, keep it the same, class info. It's going to add a two, even though it's a different name than the original field, I'm just going to add a two just to know that all the number twos are on the new version. Field type is a repeater field. Field instructions, add cast members with images. Is it required? Yes, because every movie has a cast. At least I'm pretty sure every movie has a cast. Repeater fields down here is where we add our repeaters, which is the information that's requested every time we add a new row. Click on add subfield. I'm going to call this cast info real name. That's going to be their real name. I tab out of here, it adds it adds the field name in here. I usually like the default, so I can usually keep it at that. It's going to be a text field. Instructions, please add the cast member's real name. Is it required? Yes. Default width, let's make it 30. Default value, none, placeholder, none, prepend, none, append, which is something that appears after input. Prepend is before the input. Both of those are none. Character limit, none. Conditional logic, no. Formatting, keep it as HTML into tags. That one's done. Add subfield. I'm going to call this cast info uh, movie name. This is also going to be a text field. Please enter their name or their character's name. Is it required? Yes. Column width 30 again. The reason I do 30 is because we want to split it up in such a way that it doesn't take up the whole width of the editor. So 30 leaves a third for their name, a third for their character name, and a third for the image that we're going to add just a second. And again, this is something you can edit afterwards. You don't have to be doing this column width right away. You can adjust the appearance of the editor afterwards by adjusting these values. Formatting, I'm going to keep it as that. No character limit, no conditional logic. Add a subfield. This one is going to be cast member image. Field type is going to be an image field. It's going to be required. Column width 30 as well. I'm going to use the image URL because we want to be able to output the URL on the front end. And here it says specify the return value on the front end. So we don't want the object, we want the URL for this demo. Preview size, I'm going to keep it as full. Library, I'm going to select all. If you choose upload to post, it means it's only added to the post. If all, it means any post can have access to it and add it to that post if you or to other posts if you want to. Minimum number of rows, it's going to add one, because again, at least every movie has at least one character, I think. Max rows, I'm not going to put a max in there. Layout, I'm going to make it a row layout. Button text, I'm going to say add cast member. It's not conditional. Those fields are done. Rules, put it onto our movie post. I'm not going to add any of the ordering right now. WP center meta box and publish this. Go back to our add new movie editor and refresh. And now this is likely going to be at the very top because we didn't add a number for the ordering. So cast two appears at the top. We can easily move it down. And in fact, I don't like the row layout, how I did this here, where it's uh, the, the real name up here, the movie name, and then the image down below. I'm going to actually change this to a table layout as well as move it down. So if you recall, movie plot was set to zero for the ordering. Trailers was set to one. Now I'm going to set the cast members to two. And that will put it below the trailers. And I'm going to change, I'm going to edit this and change the layout to be table. And then click on update. Refresh this page. And now we have cast info moved down below the plot line and the trailers. And we have it laid out as a table where we can horizontally add every new person. And this is just something 
of my preference on the back end. Nobody sees it this way on the front end unless you specifically program the front end to appear like this, which you probably wouldn't. Having it in a table versus a row in the editor is strictly my own preference. So set that up how you want to set that up. Click on add cast member to add more, just like we did with adding more trailers. This is the repeater field, which is a premium add-on for version four, and it's included in the pro version of version five for advanced custom fields. So now we have created the fields, the input fields for the storyline, the trailer, and the cast. Last thing we want to do is add the movie info, which is going to appear in the editor on the right hand side column over here because we have a lot of space available to add metal boxes over on this right hand column. So we're going to add it over there. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Click on add new to add a new field. I'm going to call this field group movie specifics. Click on add field. There's going to be a whole bunch of fields we're adding because again, we're creating all this data that appears on the left hand side and even these two options that appear right below the title and this image. So there's going to be quite a few things we're adding here. So the first one, we're going to call it movie picture because that's what we have first in our columns here. Might as well stick with that ordering. So movie picture field type is an image. We have the same settings as the image that we had earlier, which is the image URL. And the previous size is going to make a thumbnail because these might get quite large. So I'm just going to keep the previous size as a thumbnail. Field instructions, I'm going to say upload an image related to the movie add to the library it's not conditional that field is done add a new field this is going to be the duration field and again you would add all the fields that you'd want to add for yours i'm going to show you how to use different fields in this section there's going to be a number field text field image field a date picker field that we're going to walk through in this exercise right now so the duration field, it's going to call it duration, uh, just in case it conflicts with the original, and it's going to call it length as well. So this is going to be a number, because duration is a number. So I'm going to say for the instructions, please enter the length of the movie in minutes. It is required, no default values, no placeholder text, no prepend, no append, no min value, no max value. No step size, no conditional logic, close field. Next up is the genre or genre, depending where you're from. I'm going to call this uh, movie genre. It's going to be a select field where they can pick from a box or from a selection drop down. If I can find select, there it is. No, I think it's going to be a checkbox. Let's do checkbox instead. Field instructions, please. pick a genre. It is required. And for the choices, you put them in as shown over here, where you gotta have one choice per line or you use the colon separation for, that gives you more control. What this allows you to do is have a different label in the in the choices versus what's output as the value when they're selected. So for example, if you chose red from the checkbox to the lowercase, the actual output value is going to be red in this example here. Uh, a better example would be if you chose CEO, for example, from the checkbox, and then the actual value was the name of the CEO. So you can differentiate them by using those columns. I have a list of genres that I just pulled up and here it is, pretty basic genres. No default values. Layout is going to be vertical. No conditional logic. Close field. The next field is going to be a rating box. I'm going to just call this movie rating. It is going to be a number field between 1 and 10. So I'm going to say, please rate the movie. Zero being garbage. And... 10 being the best movie in the history of the universe. You don't have to be quite that dramatic in your instructions, but it's always fun. Required? Yes. Default value? Mm, make a default value of zero, I guess. Uh, placeholder text? No. Append, prepend? No. Minimum value? Zero. Maximum value? 10. Step size? one 
Step size is basically how they're allowed to increment up. So if you have a step size of one, somebody can't enter 1.5 as the value. They have to have a whole number that steps up by one as the increment. Click on close field. Next one is the release date. Movie release date. Field type, this is gonna be a date picker field. So if I can find date picker, here it is, date picker. Field instructions, please choose the date the movie was released to theaters. Is it required? Yes, it is. The save format, I just keep that as it is in the default, the display format like this. We're gonna have to mess around with this a little bit in the code when we create the custom page template, but we'll get to that when we get to that. The week starts on whatever day you want to start on. That's your preference and it's not conditional. Close field. The next field we're gonna add is the country where it was created. So um, I'm gonna call this movie country. Kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, but I'm gonna keep it anyway. This is going to be a drop down because there's gonna be a lot of options. So select creates a drop down. Please choose the country where the movie was filmed. Quite often movies are filmed in more than one country, so this might not be the best setup for this, but I'm gonna go with it. Click on required. And the choices, I'm gonna paste in a list of countries here. If you want this list of countries, head over to the blog post, the link in the description down below, and you can just copy and paste this list of countries from the blog post instead of typing them all out manually if you need a country list. Default value none, allow null, meaning allow a zero selection as in it wasn't filmed on any country on the planet. Um, that actually could be relevant because if it was filmed on a cruise ship, that's international waters, and that's not actually in a country, but I'm gonna let that exception slide. I'm gonna keep no, select multiple values. This is where you could select more than one if it's filled in multiple countries. I'm gonna choose that. Conditional logic, no. The next field we're adding is the language field. So I'm gonna say main language for the label. I'm gonna choose a select box again. Please choose the main language for the movie or in the movie, maybe. It's gonna be required. Our choices are gonna be these ones. Again, this list is on the blog post. Feel free to copy and paste it from there if you need a list of languages set up like this. No default value. I'm not gonna allow a null. I'm not gonna allow us select multiple values so you can see the difference between the fields even though it may be relevant. There may be more than one language spoken in the movie, but I did say what's the main language. So I'm gonna save this as no, and it's not conditional. Close field. Next field is gonna be a number field for the budget. So I'm gonna call this movie budget actually. If I could spell it, that'd be great. Movie budget, field type is a number. Field instructions, please enter the crazy amount of money spent to create this film. Is it required? Yes. Default value, no. Placeholder text, no. All of these are no. Minimum value, I'm gonna to set to zero. Maximum value, I'm gonna to set to, I don't know. Don't really have to set it, but I'm gonna set it anyway. I'm gonna set it to one billion. Is that one billion? That's 10 billion. All right, so maximum value set to 10 billion. Step size, I'm not gonna add that, even though you could set it to something like 100,000 where they're not adding specific $1 amounts in for the movie budget, but I'm not gonna add a step size. No conditional logic, close field. The last field we're adding is opening weekend. How much money was made on the opening weekend? So I'm gonna call this opening weekend revenue. It's gonna be a number field. Instructions, please enter the amount of money the movie made in its opening weekend. Is it required? Yes. All these values are blank. Minimum value of zero. Maximum value, I'm not gonna set one. Step size, I'm not gonna set one. Conditional logic, no. Close field. Where do we wanna add all this stuff? This entire group of fields is going to be added 
to our movie post type. We're not going to set an order number right now because we don't know exactly where it's going to show up yet. Position, I'm going to choose on the side. Style, I'm going to choose WPMP meta box. I think it will show up below the featured image. We can adjust where it shows up exactly using the ordering in a second if we don't like where it is. But I'm going to click on publish and then refresh the movie page and see where it actually appears. Now let's head out to our add movie editor and refresh. And now those options should appear somewhere on the right hand side over here. Where? I'm not sure yet until the page reloads. So here they are at the very top, movie specifics, and we can enter all the data that we asked for in those custom fields. And it's pretty straightforward, just like any other data entry type of thing. We're going to go through creating an actual page with real content in just a minute. But now we have our editor done. We have a completely custom editor built with advanced custom fields that we're now going to use to create cool looking pages. Now these custom pages aren't going to look cool right out of the gate. You have to apply some custom CSS or write some CSS to make them look cool, but you can create some awesome looking pages. So going with the example that we have already, this Guardians of the Galaxy one, I am just going to copy the content we have here just to keep things quick. We would add at the very top the movie title. It's going to change this to 2018, even though it's not true, just so we know this is the one that we created today. The movie plot is just some more Ipsum text. I'm going to paste this in two times, so we have four paragraphs instead of two. There's four paragraphs. The movie trailers, just going to get one. I'm going to copy the link address of this trailer, click on add trailer, paste the link in here, cast info, I'm just going to add two cast members so I don't take all day doing it. Peter Quill is Chris Pratt and add another one, Zoe Zaldana is Gamora I'm going to add their images, which I already have in the media library. If you don't have their images in the media library, you just click on upload and then upload the images. So we're going to choose Chris here to add him as Chris Pratt, which is who he is. And then for Zoe, I'm going to choose Zoe, which is this young lady right here. Now we have their names, their images, and the excerpt I'm not going to add in right now but I'm going to add in the content on the right hand side. So for the movie picture, I had Rocket in there before. I'm going to put him in there again. For the movie duration, I'm going to say 120 because I don't really know. 120 minutes. Genre, action, comedy, adventure. Those three look pretty good. The movie rating, this is pretty subjective. I'm going to put in 9. quite enjoyed the movie. Movie release date, I don't know. It was the summer of 2017. Let's say it was August 10th. I have no idea. Film and country, I don't know, but we can choose more than one. I'm going to choose Brazil and Brunei. Movie language in English. Put that back to English. We have a drop down of all those values that we entered. Movie budget is, I don't know how much it was. 3 billion. That's what? That's 3, 30 million? Let's make it 300 million. How much should I make on the first weekend? Um, $24. Set a featured image. We have that big image in the background. This one right here. And that's going to be our featured image. Now let's click on publish. And now that's published, we can start phase two of this tutorial. Yes, believe it or not, it's been this long and we just finished phase one. Because if we go to this URL and see what this published post looks like, it looks nothing like our end goal. We see that some of the content we input is on this page. There's the title, there's the featured image, but that's everything. Because that is all that is included in a post type in WordPress. They don't have any of these other fancy fields we created and we have not yet coded a page that contains those fields and pulls them out of the database to display on the website. And that's what phase two is. In phase two, we're going to turn 
this post where it just has a couple things in it to this post where it's full blown, all the content we created and repeatable. We just can create as many posts like this as you want. Just add new information, new movies, new recipes, new whatever it is you're adding and they will all come out pristine like this after we're done phase two. And on this site, I already have a child theme. So if you want to create a child theme, they're really easy to create. I've linked to a playlist in the card up above and in the description down below that shows you how to create a child theme. It's really simple. And I'm going to log into my hosting account now, and we're going to create a new custom post type within that child theme that's going to be used for these pages. So I'm just going to quickly log into the hosting account. Now we're in the hosting account. I'm going to load up the file manager and then go into public underscore HTML and then into WP content and then into themes. And my child theme is this one right here. And again, if you don't have a child theme yet, I encourage you to make one. It's in the tutorial I mentioned down below. There's a link in the description. And this is a child of the Divi theme. Now, if we come in here, we're going to see a single .php, which is the template for a post page. And then a single dash music .php. This is the template for the music custom post type. And we're going to go ahead and get a new copy because I'm going to presume you're just creating a child theme or you don't have any templates there yet. Go into Divi and create a copy of the single.php. Just going to copy this. I'm going to copy it to my child theme folder. Actually, no, I'm not because I already have that one in there. I'm going to copy it to right here with a different name first. I'm going to call it single .php cpt or ctp. Now I'm going to move it. Why name that? I'm going to show you in just a second. I'm going to move this into our child theme folder. And now it's within our child theme. And after the dash, the ctp, what I need this to be is the slug of the custom post type. So if we go over here into our demo movie here, the slug is movie. So I need to change this to single dash movie. And hit enter to save it. Don't click out, hit enter. So there we have our custom page for a custom post type. If we click on editor or edit to see how this looks in the editor, this is basically just a single post. If we refresh this page, this probably won't change at all because this pulls in the single.php and we just created the single.php as the template. But to prove to you that it is pulling this content here, I'm just going to take everything, cut it, save changes, and now we have a blank page. Now if I refresh this page, it's going to be blank. It's all gone. Put this back in there, save changes, refresh this page and it's going to all come back. And this goes back to the WordPress hierarchy. The way WordPress loads content is very interesting. And I have a tutorial on that as well, which I've linked in the description up above. It's going to make this process a lot more sense how WordPress looks through all the different child themes and prioritizes different types of file names for different types of pages. It's very cool stuff. So what we have is now a file we can work in to create our custom template for a custom post type. Now I'm going to go through this a little bit slowly so you can follow along. But at the end of the day, all you really have to do is come to this blog post, which I've linked to in the description down below and double click into this piece of code right here. You can just copy and paste this entire thing, paste it into this file, and then you have that page done. But I'm going to do a piece by piece so you can see what each piece does. So I'm actually going to go ahead and delete everything again. I'm going to start at the very top by pulling in the header of the website. So I'm going to open this by saying PHP get header. This is going to load the regular header for the site. At the bottom, I'm just going to copy this actually. I'm going to copy that, put it at the bottom of the page, and I'm going to say get footer. Save this. Now when I refresh this, we're going to have just the header and the footer. And there they are, all bunched up together. 
if I write the word content in the middle here, we're going to see the word content squeezed in between these two. And there it is. And that's where our page content is going to go. And again, our end goal, even though I closed, I'm going to open it again, just so we can see what our end goal is. And keep that in mind as we're working. Our end goal looks like this. That's what we're working towards. So when we're building, you might have this as a PSD file, a Photoshop file, or just an image file. You might be building it off an existing WordPress template or who knows where, but you're going to have something you're working with more than likely that you want to try to match. So we're going to try to match this on this page. And the first thing we need to do is declare all the variables. Like I said, you can copy and paste this entire code right off the bat if you want, or you can get a piece by piece like I'm going to show you here. But I'm going to declare the variables at the very beginning. And I'm going to walk through each of these as I put them in there. I'm going to put them all in and then walk through them all. As you can see, this is a PHP file. If you do the wrong things in the wrong areas, you will break this template. Now, it won't take down your whole site because your site isn't based on this file. But all the pages that are built on this file will be taken down if you do the wrong thing. Luckily, you can just undo what you did and everything's back online. So it's super easy to fix. All that to say, just be careful. So the first thing we have at the very top is we check if this post has a thumbnail. And if it does, we get the URL of the thumbnail and save it in the variable featured image. If we don't have a thumbnail, we add the URL to a default image. This is optional, you don't have to do this, but let's say you didn't have a featured image, which is the background image here. If you don't have a default one to replace it, this would just be blank if you don't add a featured image to the page. So if you wanna have a featured image, you can define it here in the else. So it either takes the featured image URL that you've added to the post. If it doesn't have one, it'll take this default image down here. And these fields are a little bit out of order, but that's okay. The order doesn't really matter. But first we have the genre field. So we get field. This is documented in advanced custom fields. If you go to the documentation, they have a lot of code snippets that show you how to pull the content from the database using these page templates. But if we go to functions, we have the get field and returns the value of a specified field. So that's the field we have right here. We're getting the field genre. And the string you put in between these two quotes is the name of the field that we gave it when we're making the fields. So if we go back into here, we have genre is movie genre. So we want to copy this and replace genre here with movie genre and replace it here as well. So you'll be replacing whatever your field name is into here. So we have if movie genre exists. So basically this is saying if this returns a value other than zero, we're going to create a variable called genres and put that field value into it. Same for the duration, same thing. If we execute this function and we find that there is a value for duration in the database, then we will do this. If there is no value for it, we won't do any of this. So if we have a duration, the field name being here, if we have that in the database, we're going to create a variable called duration and add the value of duration to that variable that we're going to output later further down in the code. So you need to go through and update all of these with whatever yours are. So I'm going to do these text fields. Text fields are all the same. We're going to get into the date fields and the number fields in a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead, pause this video, fast forward, and all my text fields are going to be filled in. And you fill all your text fields in, and then we'll carry on with the date and the number fields.
The release date's a little different than other fields because there's a date involved, a date and time. The date time function that you see here is a PHP function. PHP is very well documented. If you have any questions about this kind of thing, just copy the function itself, open a new tab, paste in the function name, and type in PHP. It's usually how I search where I have PHP first and then the function name. And then it will more than likely pull up a PHP page like this one, PHP date time in the manual. And that will tell you everything you need to know about the date time function, including well-written explanations, examples, code examples. There's all sorts of information in here to help you figure out what, they, what the date time function is. So I can't go through every single PHP function that's in here. I can only show you the ones that you need to use and then you can go and research them further or you can ask me to make tutorials specific to that in the description down below. I don't have any specific PHP tutorials on the channel because it's a WordPress channel. Even though it's built on PHP, it's not really PHP as far as what people want to learn about WordPress. But if you want to learn about PHP, let me know in the comments down below. I can make a playlist just for PHP if you want. So that's the date time function for the release date. We have some money functions for the movie budget and the opening weekend. I noticed I had a spelling mistake in there. Nobody told me about it. You guys didn't say anything, but I had a W instead of an E there. But we'll go with it. So we, we actually, in the back end, we enter just a number, like a billion dollars for the budget. That's not actually gonna be displayed as a monetary value unless we do a little bit of extra coding in the PHP. So the get field will pull in the billion dollars and put it into the number variable. And then we have some code to turn that into North American dollars. So with the dollar sign, with uh, a comma, to separate three digits with a period before the decimals. That's what all of this is setting up in here. And again, these are PHP functions. Money format is a PHP function. So just like we did with the date time, you can look that up in Google, set locale, LC monetary is an argument of set locale, and so is this. So you can very easily just look these things up in Google and figure out what they all mean. And again, if you want more specifics, let me know in the comments. The opening weekend revenue, same thing, because we want to convert that into dollars. And one thing as well is for the picture, because when we set up the picture custom field, we asked just to have the URL transferred when we go to the front end instead of the image object. So we're actually using just a regular old get field, and this will pull in the URL of the image into the movie underscore image variable. And now we have all the variables set. Now all we have to do is output some HTML code mixed with some PHP to create an actual page. And if I save this page and go take a look at what happens out here, it actually won't be any change at all, except for I think I deleted the word content. But there won't be anything on the page because the variables that we created are just in the PHP. They're hidden in the back end until they're actually output onto the page. So what we have to do to get that output is go to our blog post and copy right here where it starts with div id main, which is the beginning of the actual content on the page. It's the beginning of the HTML. I'm going to go down, the, down to the very bottom, hold down shift, copy all of this, paste it between the end of the PHP there and the footer. And this is all the HTML content we need to create this page that we're working on. I do have to update some of the variables, which we're gonna do now, and we're gonna go through and, and look at some of the details on the page. As much as this isn't a tutorial for PHP, this also isn't a tutorial for HTML. So I'm not gonna go into detail about what divs are and what IDs and classes are and, and the P tag and the H1 tag. And if you want me to do a playlist on that specifically, I can do that. And also another channel I'm working on, which is just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I've linked to that in the description above or in the card above. If I can, link to that channel in the card above and in the description down below if you want to check that out. I go into a lot of detail about all the different HTML tags available as well as CSS and JavaScript starting to appear on that channel as well. But my point is, this isn't an HTML tutorial. This is a advanced custom fields tutorial. So the important things on this page are we have HTML to create the page. 
we have the WordPress loop, which starts here with a while tag. So it basically is a loop that loops through all the posts and all the content within those posts. And it starts here and it will end at the very bottom, at the very bottom down here. So everything in between those PHP tags, the while and the end while, that is all content that can be updated specifically to that post without adding a post ID. You can have stuff outside of the WordPress loop as long as you have the post ID involved. But within the loop, it will load whatever the page is and pull the information for that page. At the very top, the very next section, we have the background image we're setting at the very top. And that is the featured image, which we updated to a different name, which was, oh no, we kept the variable. Oh no, sorry, we, we kept all the variables the same. We just changed the, uh, the strings inside of the builder. So all these variables that are shown down here should work just fine. So we have our featured image that's gonna be set as a background. We have the title that's echoed out. This is not something that we created in the advanced custom fields. This is a, a regular WordPress title function echoing out the title. Then we have a loop where we output the genres. So as long as we have more than one genre, it's going to appear here. And this section in the for each is going to keep on looping. So as long as we have genres, if we have more, if we have more than one, this is going to loop out twice. Or sorry, if we have two, it's going to loop out twice. If, if we have three, it'll loop out three times. It's separating them by span tags. We can look at this in the, the source code after. But if you want to loop these out as a list, you basically have, you start the list out here before the PHP tag, you end the list after the PHP tag, and then instead of spans, you just have list items. And then that'll output the genres as a list, if that's how you want to do it. But in this example is just a span tag. So I'm going to delete that extra stuff. Then we echo out the duration, and we have in minutes afterwards. So this period here is concatenating two different PHP things, usually a variable, which is this one, with a string. Inside these single quotes, we can have HTML, we can have just regular text, and the period joins them together. So it's gonna output a number for the time. So let's say 100 is the duration, and it's gonna add in a space and then MINS, which is short for minutes. So it's gonna say 100 minutes. If we see that on the page out here, this is how it displays. In this case, 136 minutes, and that's the variable. And this is that text string that is right here. Next, we have the rating that's output on the page. Just a simple PHP echo for the rating variable. Then we have a, another background image right here for the movie image, which is the one of Rocket the Raccoon, which is this one right here. And then we have the movie info. And we basically just go through and we echo out all this stuff on the page. The genres again, we loop through those. Country, language, budget, opening weekend, we simply echo those out. And then we go into the main content. We have the storyline of the movie. The trailers are a little bit different because we didn't set those up at the top, if you recall. The trailers and the cast members we set up down here because they're a little more complicated. There are repeater fields. So we have to go through and check how many repeaters there are, how many subfields there are in the repeater. And we have this get subfield function, which is an advanced custom field function. If we go back to the resource page, again, the resource page is very well documented. So if you have any questions about advanced custom fields, it's going to be in the resource page that they have. And they have all their functions in here. There's get field. Get subfield is this one right here, which is in a loop, which we see out here. It's a while loop. So if we have rows for the trailers, then we keep looping through this while we have rows for the trailers. And we get the subfield URL, which is just echoed out the URL again. And we put that URL, this is where the actual HTML comes in. We echo out this content in between those quotes right here. And it's gonna echo out an embed container. It's gonna create an iframe. It's going to put the trailer URL right in here. And it's going to echo with the rest of the iframe. 
which is basically just a YouTube embed iframe, quite simply. And we echo in the URL for the trailer. And then after the looping is done, we end the while and we exit the PHP block. And then the cast is the same thing. There's a little more stuff in here because we have a cast name, a character name, and uh, an image, but it's basically the same. If we have cast rows, and while we have cast rows, we're gonna do what is inside of here. We're setting the variables, so this loops through every time. So this will uh, pick up Chris Pratt, which we put into the builder, and it's gonna loop through all of these things for Chris Pratt, and then it's gonna start over and loop to the next person, and then start over loop to the next person. So for Chris Pratt, it's gonna come in, it's gonna set his image, it's gonna set his real name, gonna set his character name, and then it's gonna echo out this HTML that we see in here, this div, the image with the URL, an h3 tag, and put his name in the h3 tag, a paragraph tag, put his character name in the paragraph tag, close the div, end the loop. If there's no more cast members to go through, it'll exit the PHP block. It's gonna close all the remaining open divs, then end the loop that loops through the entire page, the WordPress loop, and then close the main div for the content and then add the footer at the bottom. And I realized that was a crash course. So for people who don't have a lot of HTML experience, this is probably way over their heads. And that's why this is not a beginner tutorial. This is an advanced tutorial. And again, check out my channel for the HTML and CSS and JavaScript. That'll help you wrap your head around all the different functions. And if you want me to create a PHP playlist, let me know that in the comments down below. So the next thing we're gonna do I'm going to double check that I have the right field names in here. So we're pulling in the right content. And then we're going to see how this looks on a page without the CSS, just echoing out the content. So I'm going to quickly just check on these field names and I'll be right back. So I updated all the strings to make sure they're connecting to the correct fields in advanced custom fields. I'm going to save changes. And I got a bit ahead of myself. I said we'd check the page right now, but we haven't actually created a page with content yet. So when we check this, it's going to have a bunch of text and stuff that just isn't going to be right. So here's how it looks without the CSS. And it turns out we did fill in information. I forgot about that because I recorded that first part of the tutorial yesterday. Today's a different day. I totally forgot that we did fill out Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Minute 2018 for the updated version and added a bunch of content. But this is how it looks without the CSS. It doesn't look anything like our target, which is this one right here. And that is the magic of CSS. HTML just puts the content, and PHP in this case, puts the content onto the page in a single column, generally. And then CSS is what you use to style the content, rearrange it, make it bigger, smaller, change colors, things like that. And the CSS is found, quite simply, on this page here. I'm gonna double click into this area. I'm gonna select all of the CSS. I'm going to copy it. And again, this is, as, as far as CSS goes, this isn't a CSS tutorial, just like it's not a PHP or an HTML tutorial. So I can't go through every single one of these rules and what they all are, but it's easy to figure out what they are or look it up on Google. For example, the, the banner section, the background repeat is a standard CSS command that you can Google and it'll tell you what the options are for this command and what these values mean. There's a whole bunch of values for, actually for background repeat, there's only a couple, three of them, I believe. But um, my point is, you can look these things up and check out my CSS channel where I go over this stuff in more detail and I can make a CSS playlist on this channel if you want me to, just let me know in the comments down below. But like I said, this isn't the CSS tutorial, so unfortunately I can't go into detail about what all this stuff is. So I'm gonna open our CSS file and put the CSS I just copied into our CSS file. Just gonna paste it right in here. And again, this is in a child theme. Save changes, come out here and hard refresh and hopefully Google picks up the new style sheet, which it sometimes doesn't, but hopefully it does. And if it does, which it did, we have a much different looking output. And we're not pulling in the storyline trailer and cast, so I gotta troubleshoot that a little bit. But our design is basically the same as this. The design is very much the same. Just so we're having difficulty outputting some of the content in the center here. 
Um, but my point is you can copy and paste that CSS. You can use this page exactly as is. You can copy and paste it in and tweak it to make it look better, or you can create something completely new based on what you learned in this tutorial. So let's go find out why storyline is not being picked up. And it is more than likely an issue with the variables. So we have in here movie plot. Let's make sure that that is the actual variable. And this is something you will more than likely encounter when you're doing this as well. So I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot these things because I think troubleshooting is very important. So movie plot two is the one we're using for this page. And the name of the field that we need to pull in is movie plot. So that is correct. So this area here is correct. Now we need to make sure that where we output the movie plot variable is actually correct on the page. So let's find where that is. It is here. And the variable on the page is movie storyline. So let's change this to movie plot and move on to the next one. Next one is trailers. So the trailers are here. There's something missing with the trailers. So we have if movie trailers has rows, while they have rows, get the URL. And this says trailer link. That should say trailer URL. I know these are correct because I updated these a second ago. And you find them again just like we did here. We have the movie plot. For the trailers, it's a little bit different for the trailers. So I'll show you that. Because it's a repeater field, there are two different things. First, the if statement looks to see if this field name has a value, and then it will loop through this field name. So that movie trailers is right here. If movie trailers has a value, then we have a while loop for movie trailers. And then we switch to the sub fields, which in this case, the trailer link, we have as trailer link. And I messed that up. It should say trailer link right here. And then we go through the subfields of trailer link without the E. Paste that in there. Now all the field names are correct. That should output the trailers. Yeah, that's fine. It's not trailer link, but it matches the variable name that we have set here. And the cast members, let's open our cast member custom field. just to make sure we have all the correct field names, because more often than not, that's going to be something you run into as a problem. So we have cast info for the main name. I'm just going to copy that and make sure I have the correct one. So if cast info, that's correct, has a value, then we open the while loop for cast info. And then we set the, the subfield variables. If cast member image exists, let's check to see if that's a subfield. And it is. Cast member image is a subfield. So if cast member image exists, then we put the image in here, not the real name. So I've got the wrong string in there. Cast member real name. Let's see if that's correct. No, it's cast info real name. So let's copy that. So I guess earlier when I said I, I replaced these ones correctly, I didn't actually do that clearly. So we replace both of those. Cast character, cast member character name is cast uh, movie name. Let me replace this. And replace this. Looks correct, but just in case it's not. Now when I save and refresh this, it should be pulling in the correct data for storyline, trailer, and cast. There's the storyline. The trailer's not there yet, but the cast members are, so that's awesome. So let's go and see what's going on with this trailer. I'm going to inspect the source. Maybe give me some hints, because I thought we put in all the right data. If I made an error, you probably saw what the error was, because I find talking and doing hard to do at the same time. No hints from the source code. So we have movie trailers. 
if movie trailers has a value, open the while loop for movie trailers, we get the subfield trailer link. If the subfield trailer link has a value, put it into a variable called trailer URL. And that should be fine. I'm going to check again to make sure I got the right strings for the field names. So we have movie trailers for the overall field, which we have here and here. And then trailer link is right here. And trailer link is set correctly. The variable is set correctly with the correct variable in here. So all those things should be correct. I'm going to go ahead and save changes come out here and refresh this page and now our trailer should load in this big white area where we currently have no trailer. And there's our trailer. This is an embedded YouTube video. We can just hit play and the video starts to play. And now we have recreated the page we set to recreate using advanced custom fields and a custom post type. And again, this is probably not specifically what you want, but hopefully you can take what you learned and create what you actually want. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Advanced Custom Fields is a very complex plugin with a lot going on. So if you want me to do other tutorials on other parts of the plugin, also let me know in the comments down below. So that's how we do it. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the private Facebook group and the link in the description down below. And next up, check out one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.